What's happening everybody? It almost looks like I'm in Sweden, but we're not. But we are gonna talk about this Swedish engineered car right here. My name is Kyle Pantis. If you're new to the channel, please smash the subscribe button. If not, thanks for your continued support. If you haven't been watching the channel the last six months, we got this car from a subscriber last year in September. He donated it to the channel. It wasn't in the worst shape, but it was in the, not the best shape. And of course, we brought it back to life completely. It needed some work done. It needed some paint. It needed some, it needed some TLC. So let's get in the car. We'll talk about the six months of owning this car and everything that's gone on if you haven't been following. And I'm going to try to also include some clips of some of the work that we've done. And I'll link the playlist above. So if you guys want to check out some of those previous videos, you guys can be sure to do that after this video. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching this. So we're inside my 2004 Saab 95 Aero. This car now has 203,500 miles on it. And when I got the car six months ago, it had 96,000 miles and 96,500 or maybe 9,500 and 600. Anyways, it was like the mid 90s. So uh, almost 200,000 miles, but it was 200, let's call it 296,000 miles. So we've put so far in six months, We've put 7,000 miles on the car, and it has been freaking fantastic. It had We've had some hiccups with the car. Um, if you guys haven't been following my channel at all, I've done almost everything mechanically to a Saab 95. All of the maintenance repairs that they require as they age, and a lot of the ins and outs about these cars. The only thing we haven't touched on this particular car is the fuel pump and some of the rear suspension, but that's because at 195,000 miles, all of those things have been done before. And of course, luckily with a 200,000 miles, 200,000 mile car, a lot of things have been done except for some of the small things. So over the course of the last six months, we've been, ro I've been road tripping this car. We drove it to Chicago and we drove it back from Chicago. We had some brake lines fail on us in Chicago. I mean, we've had some fun with this car, all fun. And of course, if this was a daily driver, uh, uh, for, for somebody like yourself watching this vehicle it's an adventure to have one of these cars because you really don't know all the time when something like a brake line is going to fail but I can tell you this it doesn't really happen often it takes about 200,000 miles for something like that to possibly happen so therefore you have your answer uh, I've never been stranded before knock on wood in a Saab I've always been able to get from point A to point B I know sometimes people have had other stories uh, nightmare stories of things happening, but I'm an I'm a enthusiast of Saab, so I'm always doing maintenance every couple months to do preventative maintenance as well. I keep an eye out on all of the weak points of these cars to make sure, as best as possible, of course, that all of the things that could leave you stranded are taken care of. And really, there's not too much that will leave you stranded on these cars. Obviously, you can have like a throttle body go bad or a MAF airflow sensor go bad or a crank position sensor go bad. And it may leave you in a situation where the car may not start or it needs to cool off to start or whatever the case may be. But all of those types of failures, like I've experienced a throttle body failure before on these cars and it luckily it happened in my driveway, you know, and now I just keep a spare throttle body around that if something were to happen, it's three bolts couple hoses and you're you're in there no problem so you know all in all it's been a fantastic experience this car was donated like I mentioned earlier to the channel I needed some paint work we had a check engine light on when the car came to us and that had something to do with the ECU wiring harness I'll link the video above it's pretty fascinating that some of these splices on the from the factory it's a factory splice as the car ages they can like the splice kind of falls apart internally so it was causing that check engine light and of course one of the first repairs we did to this car was fixing that and of course it eliminated the check engine light and now of course we have a check engine light on but it's completely uh, irrelevant and not related to that problem of course I believe it has something to do with the cats or maybe it has something to do with the uh, O2 sensors but then again I can't even plug in to my OBD port because the OBD port isn't working. So I still have 
haven't figured out why. I'm not getting any positive or negative ground feed on that when I put a tester. But uh, the car's obviously still running fine. It's, the check engine light's been on now for about 2,000 complete miles, so it's not like it's hindering on the performance of the car, but obviously we need to check into that, obviously. Gotta get, we gotta do it. So overall experience from that check engine light, We've done some body work. We got the car painted since it had some rust. This was a New England car, so it had some, some paint issues. Took care of all of that. Took care of the dog leg rust. Uh, we did the suspension. Uh, we've done, not the suspension, I'm sorry. We've done um, the, the subframe bushings on this car. Major, major component to these cars as they age. We've dropped the oil pan to make sure that all of the internal seals were replaced and solid and of course, there was zero sludge in the sump pump, which tells me that every owner prior to me having this car, I think there was two other owners before me, took, could, took amazing care of this car. And honestly, the inside of the car really shows for that. And just the overall car, the performance of it, the way it rides, you can tell that this car was well maintained prior to me having the car. And it's absolutely amazing. So since uh, the paint work, we went and took a road trip to Chicago, it's 2,000 miles or so. We had brake lines fail. We had a little transmission hiccup. I flushed the transmission and the transmission never failed on us, but I was losing transmission fluid because I, I by accident, plugged the breather hose into uh, something it wasn't supposed to be plugged into because it looked like they kind of went together. And when I went and did the ABS module, which was another repair we did to this car uh, that failed, um, that failed while after having the car it happened while we were driving it road tripping it upstate new york so another little hiccup on the car common problem couple bolts once again maybe 150 bucks 200 bucks send it out get it rebuilt put it back in there but yeah so i plugged the breather hose in and messed that up but here she is we're running again and that's the, that's the life of a Saab, whether you have 203,000 miles on it or 150,000 miles. There's always some little something, but it's never a big something as long as you know what's going on and how to prevent some of these things from really becoming you know, catastrophic to the car. Obviously, the biggest thing with these cars is engine oil issues, sludging, but if you know what you're doing and you take the proper precautions and make sure that proper check valves are in place and everything is good <laughs> they just keep going turbo this turbo i think is original to the car uh, i suspect it is and uh we're not burning any oil car runs fantastic and uh it's really nice to have so the car is really nice to have and the reason why it's got a sweet spot in my heart if you guys haven't followed me on my channel is my first Saab 95 ever was a 2002 it was a tan exterior like this one but with a tan interior on the, on the inside and it was not an aero spec but by the time I was done with the car I had completely um, I had completely changed out the turbo I've tuned it did all the performance modifications so essentially it was pretty much uh, an aero spec and I sold it the car was immaculate it was a, it was perfect condition and I sold it at 195,000 miles so when this car came to me at around the 195,000 mile mark 196,000 um, you know it kind of was like okay we're gonna live vicariously through that previous car that made me fall in love with sobs and uh, that's why I, I still drive it uh, the, everybody in the family drives it it's kind of like everybody's extra car if they want to use it they, they got a key they can take it and uh, mainly for me uh, I, I do some commuting in this car and also road trips if I'm doing like any long road trips I go ahead and I just hop in this car because I don't need to worry I don't need to worry about um, I hear something with the full, full turbo and I'm not getting full power so as we're speaking we're getting a little issue you guys hear it S sounds like sounds like we're doing a six-month ownership review of my Saab 95 <laughs> That's so funny. That is so funny, guys. This is total impromptu here. It sounds like
sounds like I got like a vacuum leak or something going on. Uh, but but anyways, let's get back to the review. It's been fantastic, honestly. Um, this is you know these are like normal little hiccups on an old Saab, and I'm not really too worried about it. We'll go in there, we'll figure it out, and we'll fix it probably for less than ten bucks. That's kind of how I feel about this situation here. Doesn't always happen that way, but but it looks like we got like a little vacuum leak or something on the turbo. Um, but but anyways, I'm gonna stop rambling. It's been a fantastic six months of ownership. A couple of hiccups. We did the radiator; it blew on us. You know, I'll link all these videos and do some panning of some shots from those works. But we serviced the cooling system, we serviced the suspension, we serviced the electronics. We put in a double din radio in the car uh, to give it the Bluetooth and all the updates that it needs, which is all amazing stuff. So um, that's that's that. Let's, let's get back to the garage. Um, in the last episode, I did some modification. I did a review on suspension modifications. One of them being the um, sway bar bushing links. Uh, sway bar bushing, excuse me. The sway bar bushings, I think, on this car need to be replaced. We are getting some knocking noises, especially in the cold weather right now when we're on uneven pavement. So I think we're gonna go. We'll bring this into the garage. I'm not getting that hissing noise anymore, so that's weird. It kind of went away. But we'll check that out as well, and let's check out the suspension. Let's get in the garage, give you guys a little tour under the hood, and uh, give you guys some updates of what's going on under there. And like I just mentioned, I'm gonna get the subframe bushings, not the subframe bushings, the sway bar bushings. In, in another episode or two, we'll get in there and replace those and she should be uh, back back to 100% again, minus this check engine light, but it's all good. So stay tuned. All right, so let's get underneath the hood. Just wanna inspect everything. I haven't actually been under here in quite some time. We've done, uh, like I mentioned, we've done trans service, cooling service, coolant, le coolant looks good, uh, brake fluid looks good. Let's check the oil level here. Oil looks good. And uh, let's go ahead now, since we heard that hissing noise, let's check out the uh, all of the vacuum lines. We got fresh vacuum lines on here. We've done them all. Got the new check valve on there. So that should be all set. Uh, let's see here. Let's see everything. So yeah, everything everything's looking good under here, guys. We got good oil levels. We got good fluid levels. Vacuum lines are all intact. Obviously, uh, that hissing noise. I don't really know what that was on the road. Maybe something to do with the cold weather. We uh, have decent mounts still on the car, so I'm gonna pull this. So I'm gonna pull this into the garage here, and we'll inspect the suspension because I haven't inspected it since the winter started, and it's been six months. So let's get under there. We'll take off the front driver's side wheel, which is where I'm getting most of the noise on the road. Um, so let's check out the suspension components. All right, so we got that front tire off. Just so you guys know, if you haven't been following this channel, we have brand new tires on this car, all season Bridgestone with a fresh alignment after we did the subframe bushing. So in terms of ride feel, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but the car, besides for performing well, is super smooth on the road with our freshly painted rims. All right, so here we are underneath and uh, just a quick visual inspection of everything. Subframe is, is mounted on there properly. Our bushings, our sway bar bushings over here. Uh, there is your sway bar bushing. Everything is wet because it's snowing, but right here is the sway bar bushing. And if I just do a little bit of that, you guys can see 
how much movement there really is. Um, and it looks like possibly the bushing on the lower control arm here is shot. So, I mean, we're just doing some quick, some quick views, um, some quick inspection here of everything going on. Uh, we're doing this live. You guys can see this, uh, these, sway these control arm bushings are moving a little bit, probably a little bit more than they should. Uh, so that's probably needing some service. But this is what it is, guys. This is what it is to own an old Saab here with 200,000 miles. And, and none of this stuff is really uh, too concerning because if you think about these bushings, these bushings were probably replaced around 100 to 120,000 miles. So, you know, we're already, again, at the life of, of the bushing. And uh, same with that uh, sway bar bushing. So uh, the only reason why I brought you under here is today I drove the car for about three hours and I was in a little bit of stop and go uh, in New York City and when I accelerated off the start I heard a little little popping noise and obviously obviously I know that the sway bar or excuse me I know that the subframe bushings are good and the engine mounts are all good and of course we did the torque mount with a polyurethane replacement so it's not clinking from there which is why it brought me to this all right so not a big deal but that is just some work that we'll need to do next on the car. And I'll probably take care of all of these bushings at the same time since, you know, it's all in the same area. Uh, in terms of these sway bar links, I'll probably replace them as well. You know, 20, 30 bucks each side for some new links is, uh, is not really too much of an issue. And you can see that these things age out. Uh, but other than that, other than this, a uh, little bit of maintenance here. The car has just been phenomenal, uh, you know, and, and for me, it doesn't upset me when a brake line fails in Chicago. It's just kind of like part of the fun, you know, and hopefully if you guys have one of these cars in your fleet, uh, that it's an extra car and that if you're daily driving it, know that certain things like a, a brake line at 200,000 miles can fail, especially in a snow snowy area in the such as where we live here in New England area. Um, and other than that, just some bushings, some maintenance, and she's good to go. Fresh tires, brakes, etc. But yeah, that's what it is to own a 200,000 mile Euro, you know, 200,000 mile sub. Uh, it's pretty, it's actually, it's actually pretty awesome. Um, and there's really nothing to complain about. So that is my six month review of owning this car. We've done a lot of freaking work getting it to where it is. But getting it to where this is is perfect. The car is actually perfect. All right. So getting it to be perfect as a 200,000 mile year old car is going to take some work. Not everything's perfect. Still isn't right. We still have some issues, but it's all good. Um, and that's kind of what this review is. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, a couple months ago, we did the oil pan gasket again on this car just to change out the seals. Um, and of course, uh, that was when we first got the cars in the beginning of the build, we had some leaking oil, which is a common thing on these oil pans, they leak, but we replaced it. And uh, I just want to give you guys a quick show. We've drove this thing across the country and we've driven 7,000 miles on it approximately since we've done that oil pan drop. So let's go under there just to give you a quick show. Now, keep in mind. It is wet out there and it's winter, but you can see all around the oil pan and exhaust. Everything is pretty dry, nice and salty and crusty. But other than that, there is nothing uh, leaking in terms of fluid from the engine. And of course, you guys can see uh, everything else is good. I see that there's a bolt not screwed in there. Hold on a second. I see a bolt pulled out. Hold on a second. Look at this, guys. That's not good. This could be some of the clunking I'm hearing. That screw kind of backed out. Let me back that in. That's interesting. Very interesting. Huh. All right, let me get that in there. But this is an inspection of, of what everything looks like, guys. We're doing it live. All right, boys, I'm a big, big, big believer 
that everything is always meant to be and it's really a good thing we did this six month review for you guys on this on this video today because I went under there we found that bolt backed out of the probably one of the most important mounts on the engine the torque mount maybe that's why I was hearing some clunking driving stop and go besides for seeing some loose bushings on the suspension but that right there is enough to clunk the motor and hear some vibrations when you're out of at a stop so uh who knows how long who knows how long it was like that but uh thankfully we caught it and as you guys can see there i got the screw, the bolt back into its proper position and i really gave it a nice snug uh gave it some nice muscle when i tightened it back in there i, I really don't know how that happened so uh good thing we did that so anyways hope you guys enjoyed the review six month ownership uh, it's a Saab. We're, we're, as you guys can see, we got stuff still happening, stuff still needing to be fixed. But honestly, it's, it treats you well when you do it. And uh, that's my overall consensus with this 203,500 mile your, uh, Saab here. Um, really amazing. So cooling system's good. Engine oil is good. Transmission's good. Inside is good. We got the latest tech. And of course, with some minor bits here and there, like, you know, ABS module, bushings, engine mounts, whatever, really not a big deal. So stay tuned for the next video, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this video and this review. A little impromptu with everything going on here. None of this was planned as you guys saw it all kind of unfold. So I hope you enjoyed. Give it a like, drop a comment. And of course, if you have any questions about your projects, follow me at Kyle Pances on Instagram. You guys can chat with me there. I'm always happy to respond, answer any questions that I can. Sometimes I can't. So stay tuned for the next one, guys. See ya.